I'm going to talk about how a review of the literature is organized, and specifically the section that focuses on all the papers that you've collected. It's usually 50 or more articles. It has to be substantial because that's why you do a review of the literature. You're bringing things together for other authors who want to look at this specific area. It's typically about 30 to 40 pages long. And unlike a research paper, which is organized by research questions, this is organized by themes and sub-themes that emerge from your literature review. In essence, you're doing a content analysis of papers in a specific area. So you're looking at themes that emerge and then sub-themes that usually emerge within those themes because it does get complicated when you have 50 or more articles. So you have a presentation of those themes and sub-themes and then it's probably a good idea to do an analysis of the methodologies used in those 50 articles because they probably vary. And there may be some limitations in those articles and opportunities for you to offer future researchers. And finally, it's very useful to have a cohesive diagram framework model that brings all the themes and sub-themes together. So let's take a look at a concrete example. In this review of the literature, the student is looking at the impact of technology on learning and education uh, in a specific area, actually, early childhood education. So it's look, looking at the impact of technology in that specific area. So what the student has done is organize this under literacy, numeracy, social interactions, and other. It looks like there's a mixed section. So they have a theme of impact on learning, and then these areas emerged. And next, you have an impact on of technology on engagement. And so that's another area. Looks like there weren't sub-themes, so it's just looking at engagement there. And then finally, there is a presentation of methodological challenges in the studies that were conducted. In this case, there's some sub-themes about sample size and description, reliability and validity, and intervention versus control groups, as well as pedagogy and design issues. Then there is a summary of each section because it's a very comprehensive review and people can get lost. The summary section allows the reader to reset his or her bearings and look at the specific areas here, literacy, numeracy, social interactions, other technology-based studies, and findings with engagement. So that's a concrete example of how a review of the literature could be organized. Let's take a look at one more example. So in this part or the section of the review, there were clearly themes here uh, and it was on information literacy. So the student looked at evolution of information literacy, definitions, learning theories related to information literacy, multi-literacies, and then digital literacy, and then a comparison of these two, digital information literacy, and then information literacy models. You can see within information literacy models, there were some submodels that were discussed. And then the student looked at a multi-dimensional framework for information literacy. So you can see how it gets quite complicated. However, if you really organize it and keep to your themes and sub-themes, it isn't as complicated. And the final thing that you can do is create useful graphics here. So in this case, the student summarized their findings into five key areas uh, about information literacy, processing, producing, presenting, planning, and picking, and then uh, 
compared them with higher uh, level skills and lower order skills and classic views and 21st century views. So that helps to bring everything together at the end in a sort of a coherent picture.